All right, I'm burping my kimchi. I do this every day. So just make sure I have clean hands. And I start with the oldest ones first. So this one's the oldest. And I'll just come in and press it down. And all the air and bubbles come up. So I'll come in and I'll press it down every day until no more bubbles come up and then that's when I know it's ready. So then I'll just put the lid back on and put it in the cooler after that. Kimchi is fermented vegetables. So see this one's barely bubbling, it's almost ready. Um, so I was taught a traditional kimchi recipe. So it has your base vegetable and then it has radish, um, carrots, Thai chilies, garlic, ginger, um, salt, and then onion, and a little bit of sugar. So that's the recipe I follow. Yeah, and that one's almost ready too. It's barely bubbling. And usually it ferments for like about a week in the summer. It takes a little bit longer in the winter because it's colder. almost ready to and then I just make sure that all the vegetables are underneath the liquid before I put the cap back on just to make sure that they don't dry out um, it lacto ferments so when it ferments with the salt it creates a bacteria called, uh, I forget the exact bacteria, but it's like lactobacillus. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, so that basically creates an environment for no bad bacteria to grow, but all the good bacteria stay and it's really good probiotic and really good for your gut um, and immune system. So whenever we make soups and stuff, we'll put kimchi in the soups like afterwards, kind of as a garnish or topping. And it's really good in the soups and broths and it's really good for your gut. All right, so every Wednesday I see my microgreens and I do several different varieties. And so I just um, seed it and then water it and then stack it. And then Saturdays before I go to the market, I unstack everything under the grow lights and they grow all week. Ready to harvest in this cold I rain? Wanna. <laughs> so we have an already saturated ground from uh, two and a half inches of rain earlier this week. And everything is, water's pooling up everywhere over an inch. Plus the ice that's still melting. Yeah, there's still some uh, decent amount of ice in the trees. Sounds really cool. And it smells good, it smells like snow. Unfortunately it isn't, but. So today we're harvesting and tomorrow we're harvesting. Uh, we're gonna get the roots today, maybe some greens. What you getting first? Cone cabbage. Ew. It's cold, yeah. I'm cold already. <laughs> <laughs> Can you feel your hands? Nope. I know. <laughs> Can't feel my toes either. <laughs> Working in the weather sometimes can be crazy, but um, we grew up in Northwest Ohio, and uh, and those are real winters. This isn't really a real winter. I used to plow snow too, uh, so we'd work like almost 24 hours straight, sometimes even more, and 
So winter weather can be sucky sometimes, but it also can get you pumped up. I don't know what it is about it, the cold or something. You know, some people sit in ice baths and stuff like that. I'm not, that's pretty hardcore. Yeah, sometimes it's kind of nice, especially after, you know, we've worked in a lot of heat this year. All right guys, pretty good uh, harvest of the roots and stuff today. Tori's finishing up some harvesting now. She's gonna get like some kale, the celery, and I think some bunching onions. Yeah, and then we got tomorrow, so tomorrow's gonna be focused on the greens more. And sometimes we just try and spread this out between two days, just, well, number one, because we had to start late today due to the ice. And number two, it's gonna freeze tonight, so we have to wait for the plants to unthaw before we can come out here and do anything. Otherwise, we'll damage them, harvesting them. Why's it gotta be this mist and not snow? <laughs> If it's gonna be this cold. I know, what's up with that? We finally got some decent chart after how many times did the caterpillars wreck these? At least five. I had to reseed those things like ten times. I know. It was Bad. terrible. Awesome colors. No, it's foggy. Well, if that gives you any idea of the moisture today. So yesterday I talked about uh not falling into one ideology for your gardening needs or your farm needs or whatever. I'm gonna go into something extra onto that today. So I got some books that I've read. I've actually read this one three times. I was flipping through it today, looking for something cool in there to try and give you guys like a little extra tidbit from the book um, that would make sense. And I legit flipped this page. It says, learn by observing. I've said this in previous videos, like you gotta you gotta plant stuff, you gotta watch it grow, you gotta learn your soil, learn your land, all, learn the crops, all that stuff. So Elliot, this is Elliot Coleman's book, by the way, um, Winter Harvest Handbook. So basically, what he was saying was, you want to look, you want to try, you want to learn each individual crop, and then fit the environment to that crop. So just pulled these carrots out of here today. Uh, tons of awesome nice carrots. Loose soil that was broad forked. Um, amended to the soil test so it has the nutrients that it needs. Uh, I put compost on here. This was cover crop before too. And yeah, and then one of the bigger things with carrots is to not put down nitrogen as you would for a green. So there's not a lot of nitrogen on here. You know, if you were just planting in compost and tons of nitrogen, so tons of feather meal or something, you're gonna get big greens. Like, it's not rocket science. But when it comes to root crops, you don't want stuff like that. They're roots, they wanna, they need actual soil and actual amendments and uh, good biological activity in the soil, so. Also, sometimes when, after we seed them, I'll put down EM1, it's microbes. And so any compost or any amendments that are in there that would need extra microbes to break them down that will help the process and so um, now you can just wait for them to get there or spray compost teas but uh, for us to be our, this to be our second year business and have crops like that that's um, one of the ways to do it just adding extra microbes really so in this book is a lot of good information and like I said yesterday what I would like to do is try and help people develop their intuition more on gardening and not just follow some kind of idea set up by somebody. And that's really what Elliot does in this book. And um, I have some other ones down there. So in this book, he basically goes through what, and he's in Maine too, and he grows all year. His farm's actually called Four Season Farm. He goes through all this stuff in here, how he manages it. And he also in here talks about some of the history of market gardening. Boiled down to the, the to put this in a sentence is, Learn your microclimates and then use them. And then, you know, the other thing there, fit fit your fit your environment to your crop. That's the microclimate. I'm standing in a microclimate right now. Uh, there's no ice on these crops today. There was no rain on the foliage, which will beat stuff up here in North Carolina because it, it rains a lot. It's like a rainforest pretty much. But I mean, that's, that's our reality. So, um, you know, if you're in California where it's basically a giant greenhouse, you may not need to do stuff like that. So another book is The Market Gardener by J.M. And uh, if y'all remember, I showed part of his master class like back in the fall or something like that. He wrote this book and we were doing the homestead thing and growing our own food, raising meat birds and stuff. And then when I read this, I was like, wow, 
uh, that makes a lot of sense. And it made a lot of sense to me coming from uh, so many years in the field and going to school for horticulture and stuff and uh, and then looking at this like, wow, this is really doable. So he goes through, and one of the reasons I'm sharing these books is because someone emailed us asking like for all the specific detailed info that would take a really long time to email back. And then, yeah, it, it's all in these books. And there's more than just the specific detail in these books. And what you're gonna get in these books is what these guys do for their farm. So you have to take it into context that way. You can't copy this in North Carolina. And there's no reason to really because the growing season is a lot shorter. The info in here is like, you know, they'll, they'll see their last bed of carrots in July. And we just seeded carrots last week. You gotta understand the crops. You really have to understand the crops the most. And and then switch the your microclimates and where you're at. You know, if you're in Georgia or if you're in Florida, it's, you know, it's gonna be way different than what we're doing here. But yeah, that's just the reality of it. I'm just trying to go more in depth because uh, I don't really do it in the weekly videos, so. And then this was uh, the book for a class in college that I had. It's Plant Science, How Plants Grow, and the names of things and uh, all this stuff. I mean, it starts out real basic, like the very, very, the foundation of plants growing and it gets into things like this like this so when you have your microclimates it has adaptations to fulfill basic needs so when it's cold when it's hot when it's shaded all these different things and how the plants react and not gonna lie this book is super boring but it's super informative so this you know it even gets into stuff like here the uh, mycorrhizae so how that forms a relationship with the roots you know and then that kind of gets you into the no-till thing where you don't want to bust up that fungus the learning never ends so yeah i just want to share this with you guys i'll put these three books in the description so you can get them on amazon this book is 30 dollars at least when i bought it and clear there's definitely 30 dollars worth of knowledge here if you read this book and you can't grow 30 dollars worth of vegetables uh out of season I don't know, you might have to read it again or something. Uh, JM's book is, it was 25 bucks when I bought it. Actually, I'm pretty sure it's cheaper now. Uh, he also has the master class too, for anybody that's more serious about um, the actually market farming as a business. And then this one is 20 bucks. Probably still the same, I'd imagine, because it's kind of a textbook. Yeah, guys, I hope that um, helps uh, steer people in a direction that might be useful. Um, this is the direction I've always taken is learn as much as you can about everything and then and then constantly have that working knowledge as a way to adjust to whatever situation you're in. We'll say, you know, we could, someone could be like, hey, I have a plan for this super massive farm where you come farm this land. And I'm going to say, and, and then if I wanted to do it, I'd have to show up and I'd have to and I have to know what to do and how to adapt. Like, if, you, if you're put in a situation like that, you cannot talk your way into plants growing. Like, you're gonna have to know what to do. You're gonna have to know how to build stuff. You're gonna have to know how to work efficiently to make it realistic uh, to investor and yourself, or if you're the investor yourself or whatever. All these, you know, this, this kind of mindset is just, that's all I'm trying to say. There's probably plenty of different books too, but, um, kind of the foundations of you know how do you run a market farm business and where do you get your seeds where do you get your tools what do you do with the tools how do you manage the land um, human scale and then how do you grow into the winter from a guy that's in Maine that figured it out he went he went traveled over Europe there's tons of cool stuff in this book about light and how sunlight affects you and where you're where where you are compared to other places in the world. So for for us, where we're at, there's a there's a place in Spain. Um, so I look up how they farm over there in Spain and see what the weather's like and how it's different from ours. But we have the same sunlight, so then you can get an idea of like, wow. Well, if it's a little warmer um, over the winter there than it is here, and there's not this crazy dips and it doesn't rain as much and all that sort of stuff, it, you can do this. So then it's like, okay, well, how do I make that happen? Well, you. If you don't want a lot of rain and you want to keep it warmer, you can put crops in tunnels like this and create the microclimate, a protected culture where you can then um, apply these other things that you learn 
and constantly, you know, the plants are always going to tell you kind of what's going on. And that's another thing too, like reading the plants and seeing things in the plants. Uh, I mean, there's just so much guys. Uh, it's crazy. But yeah, I'll leave these in the description. And also, you know how cool it is to mess something up and then figure out how to do it right? That's pretty rewarding. A lot of the stuff we've already messed up and figured out. So it's kind of like the cost of admission. A lot of things can help you speed up that process, like the reading and the master classes and stuff. But yeah, the, 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 the learning curve still needs to happen somehow, which is, which is good. Really, and really it kind of never ends, at least in my mind. Nice head lettuce is George. Tanks. Okay, it's getting dark, so we gotta turn on the tunnel, the Christmas lights in the tunnels, and go get eggs. All right guys, thanks for watching. Tomorrow's gonna be harvesting, washing, packing, 